Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I'd review this little video that I found very particularly interesting. And this is going to be a video by the boxing channel named Aki TV. And usually when I do reveal or when I, when I do overall uh, review this channel, it usually is to expose a certain narrative. But I just thought that I would talk about this not only because I thought that I would put certain information that would be useful in there, but I thought that I would talk about the prospect of this fight possibly happening. Now, there is no confirmations of this fight happening. Of course, for a lot of us, it just is an interesting prospect to think about. For those of us, of course, that have been watching boxing, especially now over for the past 10 plus years, we know overall that's the heavyweight era of that era that Vladimir Klitschko that he was dominant for almost a 10 year stretch or at least around a decade, you know, a decade stretch. And then Tyson Fury, of course, came in in that fight and he was able to beat Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, somewhat dominantly, or at least overall clearly beat him by a clear, decisive decision. And then, of course, Tyson Fury retired after that. And then you had the Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder era. And it may be a little bit forgotten now, especially for some of you that maybe have forgotten overall that time. But for those of us that have been around for the 10 you know, plus years that have been watching boxing and we know overall what's been going on, at one point in time, Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder was not only looked at as the biggest heavyweight fight in all of boxing, but debatably the biggest fight in all of boxing, period, point blank. But Mr. Anthony Joshua, of course, after his most current loss against Alexander Usyk, the question is overall, and he has suffered two losses in a row now, and he does have three losses within his career, one to Mr. Andrew Weiss that, of course, he did end up avenging in an immediate rematch. And then one against Alexander Usyk, which he could not avenge. The big question is now with Mr. Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, where do they go from here? And overall, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, if they are willing to fight each other. And that's a big, big if because I'm not so sure if those two fighters are be willing to fight professionally much longer. And if either of them will, will be willing to step in the ring with each other. Because there would be a lot of pride and a lot of embarrassment on the line. Because in my opinion, because of how wanted this fight used to be. That want, in my opinion, never truly goes away. For those of you that may remember, for those of you that were back around in the 90s. Now, I was not really around during that time. But you don't really need to be to know how exciting that fight was for so many people. But if you listen to a certain amount of a people who experienced that era. A lot of people, when it came to the Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield fight. A lot of people thought that Evander Holyfield actually was a washed up fighter when Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield had that first match. I believe someone in the mid or the latter part of the 90s. But it was still a very intriguing fight because it was a fight that a lot of people overall always wanted to see. So it was always a very, very interesting matchup. So it still got, I believe, millions of pay-per-view buys or however many pay-per-view buys that it got for that era, which of course was a lot. Even though Evander Holyfield, he had suffered a few losses I believe at that point in time in his career, and it was thought that he was going to be dog food for Mr. Mike Tyson. And then, of course, Evander Holyfield, he ended up shocking the world, at least on most people's part, because he ended up not only defeating Mike Tyson, but he ended up knocking him out. My point being is this, a certain fight all in all that once upon a time, even if it seems a little bit past due, people are always going to want to see that fight. And we can bring up other examples as well. We can bring up Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather Jr., and of course, for those of you that may have been early UFC fans, or for those of you that are 30-something, 40-something years old, you may remember the inception of the UFC, and you may remember the Chuck Adele and Tito Ortiz era. Well, Tito Ortiz, of course, was the UFC light heavyweight champion for a very decently long time, and Chuck Adele, at one point in time, was the number one contender. And there was many, many people who wanted to see that fight, but that fight did not happen for a very long time. It was finally when neither Tito Ortiz or Chuck Adele was the all-around best fighter within that division, but Randy Couture, when that fight finally happened. And even though neither of them were the champion, it was the biggest fight in UFC history at that point in time when it did happen. So if Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, if they were to fight within this next fight, now do I believe that they're going to fight immediately, you know, within these next fights? No, not necessarily, but if they do end up putting on that fight, I think not only would it be a very good fight, I think that it would be a fantastic fight. Because whoever is the winner of that fight could debatably debate that they were the clear and concise second or third greatest heavyweight of their era. Somewhere around there. And there would be a lot of pride, there would be a lot of emotion 
on the line. Because these two, when it comes down to it, they have a history with each other. There's been a lot of allegations of who has ducked who when it comes down to it. And at one point in time, Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua was the main sought-after fight, not only within the heavyweight division, but within all of boxing. So if that fight overall did end up happening, I think that it would be a fantastic fight. And of course, both Mr. Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, ironically, neither are really at the top of the of their division at the current moment in time. Neither of them have belts. So it's either now or never, in my opinion, for this fight. It would be very, very particularly interesting. But anyways, Mr. Aki TV is going to talk about it. I'm going to tune in. Deontay Wilder gives his reaction to Anthony Joshua losing the rematch to Usyk, where he stated, quote, they tried to lock me in for insurance because they knew he wasn't going to win. This is strictly a business, not a sport. There's a difference. End of the quote. One thing for sure and two... Th you know, let me say this about Mr. Deontay Wilder. And I've been on his ass for a very decently long time. Not necessarily because I hate him or anything of that sort. Once again, if you go on my channel, I always exercise the notion that I don't hate and I don't love any of these fighters because... That would ruin my logic and objectivity. So everything that I say is going to have a certain amount of a point. Whether I end up being right or wrong, that's what I logically think. It just is what it is. And no one is ever going to be right 100% of the time. But it just is what it is. Mr. Deontay Wilder, he can talk all this shit about how allegedly Anthony Joshua was avoiding him. And that's not me saying that maybe Anthony Joshua was always just gung-ho on fighting Mr. Deontay Wilder. But there were certain times where Deontay Wilder certainly did not show the greatest of interest in fighting Anthony Joshua either. A, he turned down the DAZN deal worth over $100 million, And B, when it came down to it, there was a multitude of times to where he said he was not willing to go to England or to Britain overall to get that fight. So it just is what it is. So both of them may be a little bit guilty of overall here and there, not wanting the fight as badly as maybe what they're putting on. But many people, of course, only blame Mr. AJ Anthony Joshua, especially the LDBC and new media channels, because they're primarily American. And we all know that they're in love with Deontay Wilder because they basically think that he's Deontay Malcolm X. <laughs> but anyway. Thanks for certain. Since Anthony Joshua lost the most significant fight of his career so far to Usyk in the rematch, and Deontay Wilder lost the most significant fight of his career, in the trilogy to Tyson Fury, it makes all of the sense in the world for Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua to fight each other next, first thing next year. I mean, this fight is a natural. It now look at this cartoon right here. When it comes down to it, apparently all in all they're alleging here that Tyson Fury was so afraid of Mr. Deontay Wilder. And then of course you have Anthony Joshua there who's on the outside looking in uh, when it comes down to because apparently he's not willing to fight any of those guys or those fights would just not come to fruition. But pay attention to one of these cartoons. Uh, and this was one of the cartoons that was happening uh, with all this allegations bullshit that they would still be posting. Take a look at who is first place in the race. And that really shows you overall who they always truly believed to be the better boxer and who truly was going to be victorious in the Tyson Fury fight. But they let their emotions get out of control. Will sell itself at some point. This was the biggest fight in boxing. And at the moment... Agreed. But in Tom, is still one of the biggest fights in boxing. Despite the fact that both Wilder and AJ are coming off losses. On one hand, you have Deontay Wilder, who already has a comeback fight against Hellenius. And that's a dangerous fight, if you ask me. After all, we don't know if Wilder... I would somewhat agree with you, Mr. Aki, because Deontay Wilder, we don't know where he is at this point in time, just like we don't know where Anthony Joshua is going to be. Robert Hellenius was a former sparring partner, and on top of that, he's decently powerful and he's decently large. You know, so it's going to be very interesting. Uh, so I would agree with you, but, you know, keep the same energy for certain fighters that also came up for loss and are trying to rebuild their career, because we all know what a certain amount of the new media stage, what they were trying to say overall uh, about Tifima Lopez when he was trying to rebuild his career against Pedro Campa. ...is still the same fighter ever since the Tyson Fury rematch loss. If Wilder was willing to fight Hellenius for his comeback fight, he was better off... Now look at this picture right here. Allegedly, and this was posted all the time when they always tried to allege that Deontay Wilder was the best heavyweight in the world, but yet all in all, even through all these allegations, look at the heavyweight who is first place within this race. And as you see here, 
Andrew Ruiz is the one in the background because basically they're saying that he blew it against Anthony Joshua. Of course, they put Anthony Joshua in third, but Deontay Wilder is not in first place. Is Deontay Wilder in second place? So a lot of their delusions and a lot of the shit that they are always telling you, they did not even truly believe that because these cartoons overall, mainly when it came down to it, these are mainly promoted by a lot of these LDBC and new media guys as well. All right, so it just is what it is. That's the reason why Aki TV would usually post them when it came down to it. But even they knew that Tyson Fury was always the better fighter. Waiting to see the outcome between Ruiz and Ortiz. That way, if Ruiz wins, Wilder could have had fought Andy Ruiz for his comeback fight. As that's a Well, I think that it's good that Deontay Wilder is fighting Robert Hellenius. I think that it's a good start overall when it comes down to it. And on top of that, Andrew Ruiz, in my opinion, it could have been a very possibly bad fight for Deontay Wilder because Ruiz is a very, very decent fighter on the inside. He gives a lot of people a decent amount of trouble when it comes down to it. And on top of that, I just don't know if Deontay Wilder, after taking two knockout losses in a row, I don't know if he's ready for one of the top five or top several guys in that division. I think he needs to incrementally, slowly build himself back up. Because sometimes when you put top guys that just lost by a stoppage, especially in the ring with someone else, they don't do that well. Bigger, magnitude fight, and way, way less risky, if you ask me. But we all know Deontay Wilder don't give a heck about who he fights. One thing for- Well, that's not true. <laughs> because Deontay Wilder, a couple of times, uh, overall did not seem you know interested in a couple of big fights. I believe at one point in time, he maybe turned down the Vladimir Klitschko fight, and there was a couple of times where he did not seem, even though he always tried to say, that he was not super duper interested in it, or that he was always interested in Anthony Joshua. There was a couple of times to where he also did not appear as excited as what he was letting on. So, no, I'm sorry. I can't agree with that. Sure, and two things for certain. Wilder is willing to fight anybody and everybody at any place, at anywhere, at any time. Well, we all know that that's not the truth because there is a reason why Deontay Wilder was bitching to where he would not face Anthony Joshua in England. So we all know that that's a load of shit, but... Anyway. However, that's more of his management job. AJ, on the other hand, he's coming off a loss. However, it's not a devastating loss like Wilder suffered against Tyson Fury in the trilogy. Well, I'm not necessarily going to agree with that because losing overall by very wide decision, which in my opinion is what Anthony Joshua should have lost by versus overall knockout loss, sometimes that can traumatize you just as much, sometimes even worse. So we'll see on the know what happens. Anthony Joshua, if he is going to beat Deontay Wilder, if even a fraction of the old Deontay Wilder shows up and Anthony Joshua fights him by not throwing a whole lot when it comes down to her thinking that he's just going to outbox him by throwing the amount of punches that he did in the Alexander Usyk fight, he's going to be sorely mistaken. Uh, Anthony Joshua is going to overall show have to show a little bit more grit. Now, once again, that's not me saying that Anthony Joshua doesn't have hearts or that he doesn't have a great amount of dog within him. But he is overall going to have to throw more than Deontay Wilder in the fight, at the least. Nevertheless, give AJ a tuna fight in November or December, since those are the dates Anthony Joshua is looking to return and make his comeback fight. Which, after that, we could have a huge showdown between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua next year. That will make all of the sense in the world, especially if you factor in Usyk fighting Tyson Fury for undisputed next year. If the winners are going to fight each other, might as well have the fighters that lost to them fight each other as well. I'm pretty sure. Every I would agree. I would love to see that fight. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, because all in all, there would be a lot of pride and a lot of embarrassment on the table. This would even be more of an embarrassment to both fighters than in when they lost to Usyk or Tyson Fury. You know, because when Tito Ortiz, when he lost to Randy Couture, yes, he was heartbroken. But when he lost to Chuck Liddell, a fighter that many people were alleging that almost for a decade that he was quote-unquote avoiding, avoiding. Basically, when you lose, whether you were avoiding that fighter or not, people are going to say, oh, so that's overall why you wouldn't fight them. You know, that's basically what people are going to look at it. So these two men know that whoever would be the winner of this fight, that basically all glory would go in theirs, and whoever loses this fight that basically, <laughs> overall, that it would be probably the most humiliating loss of the decade, at least within the heavyweight division. So it would be very, very particularly interesting.
one would love to see these fights. With that being stated, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Ak TV. Peace. And I'm on to the next one. But anyways, that's really overall about it for this video. I just thought that that would be very particularly interesting. I would personally love to see the Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua fight. But all in all, I just don't know if it'll happen. I would love to see the fight happen. But it wouldn't shock me if those fighters, if they ended up retiring very, very soon within the next year or two. Uh, because all in all, I think both of those fighters believe that there's just not that much more left for them out there. Deontay Wilder has already been on record as stating that he believes that he has proved everything that he has needed to prove. Now, whether Anthony Joshua, he will come back or not, that's up to him. I don't really know because he hasn't really stated what his future beholds, but it's going to be very interesting. But I could easily see him retiring as well. It's going to be very interesting. But anyways, that's all about it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later, and we'll see what happens with these two gentlemen later on down the line.